Who the hell are you? Right. You asked for it. Machine Games swaps guts and gore for campy, fun action in Indiana Jones and the Great Circle. Ahead of my recent hands-on preview for Indiana Jones and the Great Circle, I couldn't help being skeptical. A first-person interpretation of Indy with an emphasis on melee combat? Really? I was also unsure if the team at developer Machine Games had it in them to scale back the overt violence and gory gunplay seen in its rebooted Wolfenstein series to suit a world much campier, more family-friendly, and dare I say, iconic. Well, after having played a little more than two hours of this timed Xbox console exclusive myself, my concerns evaporated the instant I picked up the controller. In several ways, Indiana Jones and the Great Circle purposely goes out of its way to feel authentic to Harrison Ford's most daring character and the adventurous world he inhabits. In my demo, I got to play through three distinct sections, each taking place in a different location across the globe. Things started off in the familiar Marshall College, Indiana's place of work in the movies. It worked wonderfully to show off the detail Machine Games has managed to infuse into every environment I'd be able to explore, as well as setting the scene for how this adventure, which is set between Raiders of the Lost Ark and The Last Crusade, begins. Indy is awoken by thunder outside after working late, and it soon becomes clear that someone has broken in. This led me out into one of the college's main halls, where I was confronted by Tony Todd's mysterious giant henchman character. Who the hell are you? What followed was a quick but formidable bout between us that proved that throwing fists won't be able to help Indy get out of every scrape. Thankfully, I had more success with the light puzzle solving sequence that followed, which had me piecing together exactly which artifact was missing out of each broken museum case that the henchman had smashed. Doing this meant I could stay on the henchman's trail after discovering which one he had taken. I'd be lying if I said that this first puzzle was brain shatteringly hard, but as a way to further ground me in this universe and to demonstrate Indiana's profound historical knowledge, it worked a treat. Troy Baker's voice work as the legendary hero accompanies almost everything I did in my demo, but it's in these basic but engaging puzzle solving sequences where he gets a chance to offer the most thoughtful commentary. He took the cat mummy, Marcus. But why? Fast forward to a brief sequence in Italy, and my next challenge as Indy was to break into the Vatican itself under the dead of night in search of answers. This played a lot more like what I imagine will be the typical linear level Indiana Jones and the Great Circle sets you on, albeit with multiple routes and opportunities to be creative included. The emphasis here was clearly on stealth, which in this game means skulking around waist-high cover, distracting soldiers as necessary, and sneaking up behind them to take them out quietly. So far, so standard. However, where the Great Circle sets itself apart is in moments where the action goes loud, and Indy must use the environment around him to take out foes one-on-one. -on -one. The main way you can do this is by using most objects as a weapon. Though you'll drop them whenever you need to climb a ledge or swing across a ravine after latching your whip up to a swing point, objects like violins, umbrellas, and even statue busts can be grabbed and hurled at foes to deal way more damage than your standard punches. Such a varied suite of improvisational melee items allows Indiana Jones and the Great Circle to properly lean into the serialized nature of the source material and is a great way to portray the eponymous hero's knack for improvisation. Gunplay is present too, of course, but is far jankier and awkward by comparison, almost certainly by design. Not to mention that firing a single shot is enough to see the enemies come running from all over the shop, it always pays to at least try to maintain the quieter, more direct approach with regards to combat. Machine Games has also been able to smartly work in Indy's nature as a treasure hunter into the level design too. Absolutely everywhere I looked, be it a cellar or guard's office, was littered with notes, artifacts and files to pick up. Just as valuable as they are to read though, is the currency they bestow once discovered. Adventure points feed into the game's relatively straightforward but satisfying skill system, where they can unlock abilities featured in books, split into survival, fitness, packing, brawling and combat categories that are much rarer to find. The most prominent skill book in my demo was called Lucky Heart, which allows Indy to come back from a fatal blow by having him crawl to grab his nearby hat in a really nice touch of fan service. Overall, exploring the Vatican may have been linear, but it was still a thrill, with multiple optional instances of opportunity. Little did I know that it was setting the stage for a far bigger, much larger level set in Egypt's Giza that worked more like a proper open sandbox. It's here where the game goes full Hitman, 
complete with various points on a big map to explore and different disguises to make use of. The thrust of the mission was to meet a contact before again getting ahead of the big bad in search of precious objects. However, this was hard to stick to given all the distractions available, whether it be a populated market with key items to purchase, a local excavation site to infiltrate, or a buried tomb full of puzzles to combat and explore. It felt like I could have easily spent upwards of two hours roaming this single sandbox alone, and I already can't wait to learn how many more of these areas Machine Gaze has layered into the final game. I came away from my Indiana Jones and the Great Circle hands-on demo truly surprised. Surprised that Machine Games has interpreted the bones of such a beloved movie franchise into specific gameplay cornerstones so well, and at the amount of detail and variation all three of the environments I was able to explore offered. Sure, combat might be a tad lacking whenever you're not thwacking a foe over the head with an instrument, and puzzles, at least from what I saw, might lean on the more basic side, but what I played very much felt like the premier Indiana Jones experience distilled into a gorgeous looking first person adventure. Are you like what you're seeing and hearing? Be sure to let me know in the comment section below, and consider subscribing to the Mirror Gaming YouTube channel to stay up to date with even more videos like this. Until next time, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.